Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We coined that slogan on a whim, and it's caught on. I, I, I did not expect that. Thank you all. Thank you for coming out. Thank you for being here in, in the cold. I, I, it's just such a joy to see everyone here, um, to have my family here, to have my parents here, my wife, my son. Um, and thrilled to be here with all of you, and proud and excited to announce that I am running for Pennsylvania Senate in the 1st Senate District. I am proud, especially because I know that I do this not alone, but I do this with all of you. And proud because this is a campaign not about an individual, but a campaign of social movements. This is a campaign whose heart and soul, whose deepest roots lie with working class people fighting for dignity and respect on the job. That is why I'm so moved and deeply honored to be announcing my campaign with the support of Unite Here. It was from Unite Here that I first learned to organize. It was from the members of Unite Here, fighting with and for them against luxury hotel developers and school privatizers, that I learned the meaning of social justice. I learned the backbreaking work that housekeepers faced. I learned of workers doing two and three jobs at stadiums and airports just to afford their health care so that a sick child or elderly parent would not send them too deeply into debt. I learned how workers were misclassified as independent contractors to keep them out of the union. And I learned from Unite Here one essential lesson, that this work should not have to be low wage, that workers should not have to work two or three jobs to get by, that one job should be enough. Yeah. I came to politics as a writer, and I look at this district through those eyes. When I look at this district, this surpassingly dynamic area that stretches from the arenas in the south to Polish bakeries in the north, from the steps of the art museum through the pasta shops and tortillerias of the Italian market, all the way to the banks of the Schuylkill, I see an ongoing story of urban renewal and destruction, of exclusion and growing inequality. The destruction of row homes and the expulsion of black and brown people that made way for the Society Hill Towers, the restaurants and bookshops that now jostle alongside struggling fabric shops on Sport Street, private schools with abundant funding next to schools whose ceilings and roofs are caving in. State money has been funneled by legislators to remediate lead and asbestos for non-union luxury hotels, and somehow we cannot find the money to do the same in our schools. It is a district where some people thrive partly because so many others struggle. We struggle with rising rents and crumbling schools, with the police and the looming shadow of the prison, the cost of health care, of daycare, of elder care, and the punishing summer heat that each year is worse than the year before. I got into politics because these are crises that we can ignore and whose root causes it is incumbent on us to address. We cannot wait, and it is time we said enough is enough. I come to politics with a belief in the power of mass movements. I am an Indian whose ancestors were part of one of the greatest struggles of this or any century, the immense upheaval that led to the end of the British Empire. That fight was not confined to India. In the 1920s, near the Liberty Bell, not far from where we are now, Indians marched in the streets of Philadelphia demanding an end to British rule. That march is linked to the moment in 1965, not far from where we are here, just a few blocks away, when Martin Luther King Jr., himself inspired by the Indian freedom struggle, addressed a crowd. And he was given to speaking then about the intersection of race and poverty, civil rights and workers' rights. He believed then, here, as we say here, now, that one job should be enough, it's what I fought for alongside Unite Here, Reclaim Philadelphia, and mass movements across the city. I love South Philadelphia. I cannot imagine living anywhere else. 
the outdoor stands at the Italian market with all the black and brown and East and Southeast Asian shoppers at the stands looking for that special produce that you can't find anywhere else remind me of the outdoor stands and carts I see when visiting India where my parents grew up. My mother in the South Indian city of Bangalore, my father in a rural village 70 miles away. I visited his village about 20 years ago and certain images stand out to me. Oxen, bright green rice paddies, endless rows of coconut trees. And I wonder how my father managed to get from there to here. And then I realized that in India, one of the poorest countries in the world, ransacked by colonialism, he had one thing that any humane country should have, access to quality, free higher education. I grew up in my parents' pizza restaurant and the amazing public library nearby. Both were filled with people of all classes and from all places. Both spaces shaped me. My parents used the restaurant as a safe haven, sponsoring green cards for Salvadoran refugees to provide them safety and security from US-backed violence. In the kitchen and the library, I learned the basic values I still carry with me today. We must care for each other. We must stand in solidarity with each other. And we must invest in our public goods. In 2015, a few weeks after Donald Trump gave a notoriously racist speech against Mexican immigrants, I was given a forceful reminder of this solidarity when I was walking with a racially mixed group of friends on Frankfurt Avenue in Fishtown and a young white man, walking in the opposite direction, swerved into my path and walloped me in the chest. I was shocked and scared and nearly as immediately saddened. I turned around as he drunkenly sprayed me with a litany of anti-Latinx slurs. He wildly swung, trying to hit me before slinking away. Years later, however it may, strange it may seem, I remain grateful for that encounter, for that moment of misrecognition. He had gotten who I was wrong, but he had also gotten it completely right. He had asserted without meaning to my kinship with the changing face of Philadelphia. I am proud to be running to represent a district that is rich in families whose roots go back generations, but which is also growing with newcomers. It is rich in immigrants and children of immigrants from Mexico, Burma, Vietnam, Cambodia, Indonesia, and Bangladesh. Rich in young people raising children and sending them to local schools. I am one of those people. I'm seeking to preserve and renew what we have. My wife, Shannon, is a preservationist who works on affordable housing. And we are proud to be raising our one-year-old son, Ishan, who goes to daycare on 4th Street, music class at Settlement Music School, and who, when he's of age, will go to his local public school, Nebinger, just two blocks away from where we live. Like so many parents, we love child rearing but struggle with its sheer costs. As freelancers, both my wife and I took three months unpaid leave when he was born. Though we had health care through the Affordable Care Act, we had a $13,000 deductible. Our, ch our child's birth cost $6,000. A minor surgery soon after he was born, another $7,000. These, along with daycare, are costs we must strain to cover. It makes me bewildered and deeply sad that to have a child to reproduce the society is punished by our system of care and health care, and that children come into this world bearing debt. In this, we are simply like so many others in this district this state, and this country. But I'm rooted in my community, and I am a community organizer who is not accustomed to taking things lying down. The status quo is not working for us and our neighbors in the district, and we are not satisfied with a leadership in the Pennsylvania legislature that refuses to take seriously the gravity of toxic schools, runaway development, corporate greed, who refuse to take seriously that our lives could be better, that we could have, if we mobilized, organized, and fought, fully funded schools, new affordable homes, renewable energy, vibrant mass transit, universal family care, and family-sustaining jobs.
We could have something different. We could have, in other words, a society that cares. This is a society that centers the importance of care workers, nurses, home health care aides, hospitality workers, librarians, student climate staff, and teachers. We could have family care and paid care leave so people could afford to care for loved ones, whether new children or loved ones on disability leave. We could have a domestic workers' bill of rights for the entire state of Pennsylvania. We could have a society that guarantees access to housing, that keeps rents from being unaffordable, that builds new public housing in areas that have long excluded it, that makes it possible for that housing to be near transit, that expands and electrifies that public transit with the aim of making it free. We should have a society that cares because a society that cares is one that does not reflexively jail those accused of crimes and instead seeks to heal and restore. A society that cares is a green society. And this is why we will be proposing the most ambitious Green New Deal policy seen in any state, anywhere. It is a society, it is a society that builds new carbon neutral housing with union labor, that detoxifies and greens our schools, and that believes fossil fuels should stay in the ground. We could have this society, this society for the many, not the few. We could and we must. I am done waiting. We are done waiting. The society we want to see is the one we have the capacity to build and it will be a joy to do so. When movements struggle, the 20th century Indian poet Viola Ramavarma once wrote, isn't it something to make the land proud? Let's do this. Let's make the land proud. Thank you so much.